the 11th Emergence Special Session of the General Assembly resume. Before proceeding further, I would like to remind members that due to temporary closure of the east side emergence doors, in the event of a fire or an emergence which requires an evacuation, please use the west side emergence doors and the stairs stairway next to the elevator banks. Those in the third and the fourth balconies, please use the stairway next to the elevator banks. Members, we recall that uh, in paragraph 14 of it is resolution ES-11-2 of 24th March 2022, the assembly decided, and I quote, to adjourn the 11th emergency special session of the General Assembly temporarily and to authorize the president of the General Assembly to resume his meetings upon request from the member states, end of quote. In this regard, I should like to draw the attention of the delegation to the document A slash ES-11 slash 6, which contains a joint letter dated 5th April 2022 from the permanent representatives of Antigua and Barbuda, Canada, Colombia, Costa Rica, Georgia, Japan, Liberia, the Republic of Moldova, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, and the United States, and the head of delegation of the European Union to the United Nations, addressed to the President of the General Assembly, requesting the resumption of the 11th Emergence Special Session of the General Assembly. I intend to conduct the proceedings of this meeting in accordance with the rules of the procedure of the General Assembly and the past practices of its emergence special sessions. The Assembly will now resume its consideration of Agenda Item 5, entitled, Letter dated 28 February 2014, from the Permanent Representative of Ukraine to the United Nations, addressed to the President of the Security Council, document S-2014-136, to take action on the draft resolution issued as a document A slash ES-11 slash L4. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ukraine to introduce draft resolution A slash ES-11 slash L4. Mr. President, distinguished delegates. Good morning, everyone. One early morning of April 1993, delegates to the United Nations had coffee, kissed their loved ones, and went to the quiet and comfortable United Nations headquarters to do business as usual. Perhaps as many of us have done this very morning. The same morning in early April, 1993, Butras Butras Ghali sent a special rapporteur to report on extrajudicial summary arbitrary executions in Rwanda. He reported a more robust United Nations response was needed. Critically, it found that the abuses could be precursors, precursors to genocide in 1993. Unfortunately, that was largely ignored by overstretched Secretariat of the United Nations. 
In early April, once again in April, in 1994, in the comfort of the United Nations headquarters, the Security Council received letters in which the Rwandan Patriotic Front reminded member states that, I quote, when the institution of the United Nations was created after the Second World War, one of its fundamental objectives was to see to it that what happened to the Jews in Nazi Germany would never happen again, end of quote. In 1994, Rwanda itself was a non-permanent member of the Security Council. This allowed the genocidal regime to influence other members of the Council with its view of the situation. As the Russia's presence today in the Security Council allows her to, spend, to spread lies almost daily. In April, again in April, this time 2006, in the docks of New York by the Hudson River, an ocean-sized state-of-the-art liner was launched. This magnificent liner was then docked on the shores of Lake Geneva. Beautiful as it is, far from being an ocean. We named this liner the Human Rights Council. The adoption of Resolution 60-251 was a culmination of five months of consultations and negotiations facilitated by President of the Assembly, Jan Eliasson, and Ambassador Arias of Panama, and Ambassador Kumalo of South Africa. Let me remind you the words of Mr. Jan Eliasson, the President of the 60th session of the UN General Assembly before the adoption of the resolution. He said, and I quote, we have, no, we have now reached a decisive moment both for the promotion and protection of human rights and for effective multilateralism and the standing of the United Nations as a whole. As our leaders acknowledged in September 2005, the three pillars of the United Nations, development, peace and security, and human rights, are interlinked and mutually reinforcing. End of quote. Now the world has come to a crucial juncture. We witness that our liner is going through treacherous fogs towards deadly icebergs. It might seem that we should have named it the Titanic instead of the Human Rights Council. If not, we need to take an action today to save the Council from sinking. The composition of the Human Rights Council is as diverse as the world map, as this assembly is. But this council, unlike the assembly, has been established for a specific purpose to promote and protect human rights around the world. And we are in a unique situation now when on the territory of another sovereign state, a member of the Human Rights Council commits horrific human rights violations and abuses that could be equated to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Bucha and dozens of other Ukrainian cities and villages where thousands of peaceful residents have been killed, tortured, raped, abducted, and robbed by the Russian army serve as an example of how dramatically far the Russian Federation has gone from its initial declarations in the human rights domain. That is why this case is unique, and today's response is obvious and self-explanatory. Let me offer you another quote. Our topmost priority is to ensure all human rights and freedoms in their entirety, including political and civil rights, 
and decent socioeconomic and environmental living standards. I believe that these questions are not an internal matter of states, but rather their obligations under the UN Charter, the international covenants and conventions. We want to see this approach become a universal norm, end of quote. It is hard to believe that the above quotation belongs to the president of the Russian Federation. Another president, however, and other times. It was said by President Yeltsin in 1992 in this statement, in his statement at the UN Security Council. We can only regret that the democratic aspirations of the peoples of Russia in the early 90s have by Putin's regime been incrementally turned to their opposite. Aggression, hatred, and Soviet-style thinking and reflections, including in the area of human rights and fundamental freedoms. And now we hear completely different statements here in the United Nations from the Russian Federation. This week alone we hear from the Russian ambassador that there is a warfare in Ukraine and civilians are killed in war. It's being said as a matter of fact, this Monday, in cold blood and as an, as an absolute normal course of action, also known as, quote unquote, special operation. Shall we agree with the describing of killings as something normal? The only healthy answer should be no, in order to contribute to the maintenance of the UN's health and the health of its human rights mechanism. All of you received the Russian diplomatic note yesterday, in which our collective effort to preserve the credibility of the Human Rights Council was considered as an approach to preserve the, I quote, domination and total control in the world, end of quote. And human rights, neo-colonial policy in international affairs. We have heard many times the same perverted logic of the aggressor attempting to present itself as a victim, while in fact doing exactly what it cries against in, in its note, killing citizens of neighboring country, trying to dominate if it not colonize it. In reply to that, we call on Russia when its rights of membership in the Human Rights Council are suspended to return to responsible behavior by implementing the decisions of this assembly and of Human Rights Council. If Russia expulses itself from the Council, it would be its own choice and there will be no need to blame others. Suspension of the rights of membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council is not an option, but a duty. And let me quote how this duty is formulated in the operative paragraph 8 of Resolution 60-251, and I quote, the General Assembly may suspend the rights of membership in the Council of a member of the Council that commits gross and systematic violations of human rights, end of quote. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not an option. It is what the resolution prescribes. We view voting to suspend a state's Human Rights Council rights as a rare and extraordinary action. However, Russia's actions are beyond the pale. Russia is not only committing human rights violations, it is shaking the underpinnings of international peace and security. A draft resolution on the matter under A-ES-11-L4 is a result of the collective effort of a cross-regional group of two dozen states that represent all regions. It has been sponsored so far by more than 50 UN member states. 
I call upon all responsible member states to support the draft. Let me now once again refer to the commemoration of the one of the darkest pages in recent history, the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. On this day of grievances and bearing its own tragedy of thousands of Ukrainians killed by the Russian invaders, Ukraine stands together with Rwanda and calls to reaffirm our pledge to never forget and to never allow the recurrence of genocide, which was a result of the international community's indifference. To those of you who, for this or another reason, opts today to keep being a bystander, to abstain, let me quote Elie Wiesel addressing President Clinton in 1999, talking about the perils of indifference. Indifference elicits no response. Indifference is not a response. Indifference is not a beginning, it is an end. And therefore, Indifference is always the friend of the enemy. For it benefits the aggressor, never his victim, whose pain is magnified when he or she feels forgotten. The political prisoner in his cell, the hungry children, the homeless refugees, not to respond to their plight, not to relieve their solitude by offering them a spark of hope is to exile them from human memory. And in denying their humanity, we betray our own." End of quote. The genocide in Rwanda was largely due to the indifference of the world's community. When the UN did not respond to warnings in the UN Security Council and in General Assembly a year before the tragedy that we commemorate exactly on this day, on the 7th of April. Today, in the case of Ukraine, it's not even a year because the tragedy is unfolding right now before our eyes. In a couple of minutes, you will have a chance to prove that you are not an indifferent bystander. All you need to do is to press the yes button and to save the Human Rights Council and many lives around the world and in Ukraine. On the other hand, Pressing no means pulling a trigger and means a red dot on the screen. Red as the blood of the innocent lives lost. And this image of the red bloody dots on this screen will stay with you and all of us as long as memory does not fail us. Think about it. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Ukraine. We shall now proceed to consider draft resolution A slash ES-11 slash L4. Before giving the floor for explanations of vote before the vote, may I remind delegations that explanations of vote are limited to 10 minutes 
and should be made by delegations from their seats. I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. Today's not the time or the place for theatrics or uh, these kinds of uh, uh, extremely uh, 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 theatrical performances like the one uh, uh, presented by Ukraine. In fact, the draft resolution we're considering today has uh, no relationship to the actual human rights situation on the ground. I would like to repeat or quote our note, from which uh, which the ambassador mentioned. What we're seeing today is an attempt by the United States to maintain its dominant position and total control, to control to continue its uh, uh, attempt at human rights colonialism in international relations. Uh, part certain part of the member states are already subordinates. Those who wish to uh, conduct an independent uh, foreign policy are uh, is an attempt to kind of move them to the periphery of international relations today we're seeing how a through the efforts of a small group of states uh, the human rights architecture has a uh, has a, uh, there's a there's a crack that's appeared in that architecture and it, it was decades in the making and the sec secretary general uh, uh, stated that the possible exclusion of, of Russian Federation from the, from the Human Rights Council could be a dangerous precedent. And as practice has shown, Western approaches uh, in dealing with acute human rights problems in certain countries have not really been successful. Not a single conflict was resolved. It was only uh, exacerbated. In many, this was uh, due to the use by Western countries uh, um, uh, the use of uh, sanctions and uh, uh, military intervention. Whereas Russia, throughout its membership in, in the Commission and the Human Rights Council, has consistently defended the principle of uh, uh, cooperation based on mutual respect and an equal status as, a, as one of the main foundations of the uh, human rights architecture. Our priority has always been to strengthen constructive dialogue involving all interested sides in the process of collective development and adoption of uh, decisions in uh, defending and promoting human rights. We reject the uh, untruthful uh, allegations uh, um, against us based on uh, staged events uh, and uh, widely circulated fakes. Mr. President, based on everything I've said, we would, would like to put this uh, draft resolution to a vote and call on all those present here to really consider your decision and to uh, vote against the attempt by Western countries and their allies to destroy the existing human rights architecture. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. I will now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kazakhstan. Mr. Chair, Kazakhstan closely follows the situation in Ukraine with particular concern and expresses its condolences to the families of those who were killed and wish speedy recovery for those injured during hostilities. We call on all the parties to speedily terminate hostilities and to search for compromises aimed at establishing peace we also adhere to the position that there is no alternative to a peaceful solution on the problem based on the principles of international law and the UN Charter. Humanitarian situation in Ukraine is dire and needs constant attention, and Kazakhstan has already provided Ukraine with humanitarian aid, sending three planes with over 50 tons of medicine and essential goods. Regarding the draft resolution on the suspension of the rights of membership of the Russian Federation and the Human Rights Council, we would like to note the following. First of all, in our opinion, the adoption of this resolution will not contribute to the settlement of the conflict. At the moment, it is extremely important not to undermine the negotiation process. In the current situation, 
it is necessary for all of us to use diplomatic efforts at all international forums, including Human Rights Council, in order to find ways to resolve the problem as soon as possible. Secondly, according to the paragraph, paragraph 8 of the resolution on the establishment of Human Rights Council, membership of the Council can be suspended in case of gross and systematic violation of human rights. To establish that case, we need to have results of a transparent, unbiased and professional investigation. In this regard, we believe that the consideration of today's resolution in the General Assembly must be preceded by a comprehensive investigation of human rights violation in Ukraine, carried out under the framework of relevant international mechanisms. We believe that only after receiving concrete conclusions and reliable information, the General Assembly may consider this issue. In the light of the above mentioned, today we will have to vote against this draft resolution. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Kazakhstan. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Bolivarian, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. <clears throat> Señor Presidente. Mr. President, as a founding member of the United Nations, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is committed to the purposes and principles embodied in the charter of our organization and to the norms of international law. We believe that the promotion and protection of human rights must be addressed in a just and constructive manner on the basis of dialogue and cooperation in accordance with the principles of impartiality, objectivity, transparency, non-selectivity, non-politization, and non-confrontation. Human rights should not be used in order to attack sovereign states since that under, uh, undermines the universal system of human rights, which is you know, to guarantee the universality and the enjoyment of these rights and fundamental freedoms for everyone without distinction or discrimination. A month ago in this assembly, we insisted on the need that the United Nations have a central role in facilitating the peaceful solutions of conflicts through dialogue and political negotiation. We regret today that the road has taken of escalating te tensions and that divisions have increased uh, among members of the United Nations. That is the wrong path. We alert the world as to the real and clear danger that in the, this situation in the region of Eastern Europe may continue in time, creating consequences which will it will take generations to overcome. We warn about the expansive effects uh, uh, the, the, around the world, especially affecting the living conditions of the more vulnerable uh, groups in every country where hundreds of millions of individuals are today suffering the consequences of the increase in the cost of food, electricity, transportation. We also warn about the start of a new arms race, which threatens to turn toward war resources which should be used for development and for fighting poverty. This is a terrible situation. But the world is facing an even greater danger. We view with alarm that there are shocks uh, between blocks that, uh, and this will lead to a worldwide conflict between nuclear powers, which will destroy mankind as we know it today. It is our obligation to reduce tensions and to strengthen all options which allow for regulating uh, conflicts and peaceful settlements. Mr. President, unfortunately, the draft resolution presented today is an example of the politization of human rights. The draft tries to expel from the human rights system the Russian Federation, the country which is an essential uh, part of the solution of the crisis in the Eastern European region. Without the Russian Federation, there is no possible peace agreement in Europe. A peace without Russia is a mirage. Uh, they, they may think that uh, the time has come for a definitive victory uh, 
and uh, a unipolar power. If this draft is approved, it will affect current negotiations being carried out between the parties and will push us deliberately toward a more acute phase of the conflict, which will be longer and hard to resolve. Another immediate result of adopting the resolution will be a historical break in the best instrument created to defend human rights, which is the Human Rights Council. Its credibility, its function, and its mandate will be affected. We will be creating a systemic crisis of confidence, which will affect the United Nations as the universal organization which can resolve regional and global crises and work toward peace. In view of the above, the Republic of Venezuela categorically rejects attempts to suspend the Russian Federation as an elected member of the U Human Rights Council and calls on the responsible members of the international community to vote against the draft resolution. Thank you. Thank the distinguished representative of Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. President, my delegation expressed deep concern to current development of political situation in Ukraine. Also, we are very concerned that some countries continue to push confrontation and distrust among member states instead of giving priority to each tension and seek political and peaceable solution to resolve current crisis in Ukraine. We reject any politically motivated initiative, lack of objectivity, impartiality, and transparency. The alleged accusation of the cruel atrocity against the civil population in Ukraine, including a relevant report and image of the civilian death in Bucha. have not surely verified and proved based on the real fact and object evidence. Prior to considering the draft resolution before us, the independent investigation must be made. And for this, sufficient time and efforts are required. However, some member states are acting and moving very recklessly for their political goals by submitting such draft resolution. Such political and unilateral action do not help to solve the problem at all. We take note of the efforts of the Russian Federation to address the humanitarian situation in and around Ukraine. The draft resolution is nothing but another example of the product of the political confrontation aiming at the tarnishing one member state at the UN stage. For this reason, my delegation against draft resolutions contain document A slash ES dash 11 slash L4. I thank the President. I thank the distinguished representative of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran has, on a number of occasions, expressed its principled position with regard to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, including during the adoption of the two previous resolutions of the 11th Emergency Special Session of the United Nations General Assembly. My delegation would like to underline once again the need for peaceful settlement of disputes in accordance with international law and for the full respect by all parties for the well-established provisions of the United Nations Charter and international law, including international humanitarian law. We emphasize that sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states must be fully respected and the safety and security of all civilians must be guaranteed. Iran remains deeply concerned about the continuous deterioration of the humanitarian situation in and around Ukraine which has sparked significant alarm in the international community. 
We call for an immediate cessation of hostilities and emphasize the importance of complying with international humanitarian law by all parties. We repeat our call for unimpeded humanitarian access to all areas of the armed conflict in Ukraine. The humanitarian needs of the affected population must be addressed immediately and the delivery of food, medicine, and other essential services to the people in need must be facilitated. The international community should encourage and support continued direct negotiations between Russia and Ukraine until peace is restored. The Islamic Republic, Republic of Iran once again calls for the escalation of tensions in the current conflict and an urgent and lasting solution to this crisis through dialogue. Mr. President, we consider the text of the resolution before the General Assembly contained in document L3 as politically driven which undermines the impartiality of our organization. My government attaches great importance to the promotion and protection of human rights. However, we are against the exploitation of UN human rights machinery for political ends, which contravenes the principles of universality, non-selectivity, and objectivity in addressing human rights issues. We have always maintained that human rights should not be undermined by short-sighted political considerations. We stress that the work of the Human Rights Council should be per performed in a non-confrontational and non-politicized manner, and membership in this body should not be politicized. We would like to reiterate our position on the centrality of the principles of objectivity, dialogue, and cooperation towards the protection and promotion of all human rights based on a non-selective and non-politicized approach. We are of the view that the exploitation of paragraph 8 of UN General Assembly Resolution 60-251 deepens confrontation and attenuates constructive dialogue between countries. For the above-mentioned reasons, my delegation will vote against the draft resolution contained in document L4. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank, I thank the distinguished representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, once again, this important international forum witnesses the exploitation of human rights in the service of political interests of some countries and the creation of polarization and politicization targeting the Russian Federation on the pretext of dealing with humanitarian issues in the Ukraine. My delegation stresses the importance of guaranteeing and respecting human rights and the importance of providing necessary humanitarian assistance to all crisis areas. Yet, at the same time, we reject any politicization of humanitarian issues and stress the importance of adopting the principles of impartiality, uh, objectivity, and non-discrimination in human rights issues. Mr. President, this coordinated Western move to denounce the Russian Federation has no relation to human rights in the Ukraine or anywhere else. Rather, it is an effort by Western countries to impose their hegemony and control over the world through besieging Russia and its punishment for its independent foreign policy. When the United States of America and its allies destroyed the Syrian city of Raqqa and killed thousands of innocent people there, we did not see such international media and political mobilization to expose the perpetrators of human rights violations. General Assembly Resolution 60-251, establishing the Human Rights Council, stressed that all human rights are universal, indivisible, interlinked, and intertwined, and that they should be treated in a just and equitable way on the same footing and with the same degree of concern. However, the practice that we have seen since the establishment of that council until now proves the adoption by certain Western countries of politicization, selectivity, and double standards in dealing with human rights issues. They focus on 
the situations of certain countries in a manner that serves their political purposes. At the same time, they disregard other situations where grave human rights violations, systemic and grave human rights violations were perpetrated in the full sound and sight of the world. And what the Palestinian people has been exposed to for decades at the hands of the Israeli occupation forces is the best proof of that. Another example is the, on the hypocrisy, hypocrisy of those states uh, is their disregard for the safety, security, uh, uh, and protection of uh, civilians, uh, including women and children in Donbass who have been shelled and uh, who have been attacked for years. We haven't seen such a move. At the same time, the invocation of the pretext of a paragraph eight of the resolution establishing the Human Rights Council is a major source of concern since we have not seen any evidence to base such talk about grave violations of human rights. What is the credibility of the sources of such information? What are the impartial international mechanisms that were uh, providing such information or proving their perpetration? the launching of accusations and the spreading of such uh, accusations through misleading media and the uh, photographs and videos whose sources and places are unknown and their spreading through open sources cannot be basis for human for a general assembly action on the issue as in the Syrian situation, Security Council and General Assembly meetings are always preceded with theatrical provocations, such as we witness in the Ukraine to justify decisions planned by Western and hostile countries in the name of international legitimacy. Mr. President, the draft resolution before us today involves a serious case of hostility and a clear example of the adoption of exclusion of which we have warned. The suspension of the membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council will have an adverse effect on its balance, its universality and the effectiveness of its role. Such suspension will enhance the hegemony of a group of Western countries on this important body. They will impose their vision and their criteria for human rights, and will, which will be used as a tool of political pressure and the targeting of certain countries. To be more frank and transparent, we believe that such practices represent a threat to the existence of the United Nations organization itself. Therefore, and proceeding from our firm and principled position in rejecting all attempts to politicize human rights, we will vote against the resolution before us and we urge other delegations to be aware of the dangers of embracing these efforts at uh, confrontation, isolation and hostility. We call for the rejection of double standards and to keep human rights issues away from all political considerations. If we want the United Nations to continue and survive, we should all say no to such resolutions. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cuba. Señor Presidente, Cuba Mr. President, Cuba has always advocated for and worked toward a human rights council capable of facing the challenges of in the international community in this area. No country is exempt. We defend the objectivity, impartiality, and transparency in the work of that body, 
its procedures and mechanisms should work on the basis of true uh, information. The use of the uh, clause on suspension of membership in the council will not favor finding a peaceful, lasting, uh, and negotiated solution to the uh, conflict in Ukraine. It will prom it will uh, not promote the uh, dialogue and understanding which should be prevalent in human rights issues. Only a few days after concluding a regular session of the Human Rights Council, uh, that body was not even given the opportunity to state its uh, position. Mr. President, since the start of the negotiating process on the building of the new council that would uh, follow the Human Rights Commission, Cuba opposed the clause on suspension of membership, given the serious risk that it could be used by specific countries which favor a double standard, selectivity and politicization of human rights issues. That clause can be activated with the support of only two thirds of those present and voting. Therefore, abstentions do not count and there's not even a minimum established of votes required for approving suspension. To be elected a member of the Human Rights Council, a country needs to obtain as a minimum in a secret ballot the support of the majority of the members of the United Nations, that is to say at least 97 votes. Thus, the rights of a member of the Council can be suspended by the will of a number of states lower than the number of states which granted those rights. The Russian Federation, which was elected as a member of the Human Rights Council in 2020 with 158 votes, could be suspended today with uh, by a, num a lower number of votes. That suspension mechanism which has no parallel in any other body of the United Nations, could be easily used selectively. It is Russia today, but tomorrow it could be any of our countries, especially nations of the South, which do not support the interests of domination and which firmly defend their independence. It was not by chance that the more enthusiastic promoters of the suspension clause when negotiating the new Human Rights Council were developed nations with a clear trend to accuse countries of the South, which do not uh, follow their alleged models of democracy uh, while uh, being remaining silent uh, in the a case of flagrant violations in Western countries. Not everyone in this hall share our concerns about the suspension mechanism. They know that the victims of its selective use will always be others. Could this assembly someday adopt a resolution suspending the membership of the United States in the Human Rights Council? Just to give one example. We all know that that has not happened, nor will it, despite its uh, flagrant and massive violations of human rights as a result of invasions and wars against sovereign states, uh, given its geopolitical interests. They have caused the deaths of hundreds of millions of civilians with uh, which they term collateral damage. There have been millions of, of displaced people and destruction throughout our planet. But this assembly has never suspended any of its rights. We also all know that the suspension clause will not be used against the state that has imposed against Cuba for over 60 years a criminal economic trade and financial blockade, which no doubt constitutes the longest and most flagrant and systematic violation of human rights of an entire people and uh, an example of genocide against a country. 
it is an ironic to note that the country which opposed the establishment of the Human Rights Council and requested in this same hall a vote against the resolution establishing it is the same one that has conveniently now activated, as it did in 2011, one of the most controversial clauses. Mr. President, Cuba will uh, follow the, uh, will be consistent with the reservations uh, when in 2006 resolution 60 stroke 251 establishing the Human Rights Council and 65 stroke 265 of 2011 on the suspension of the rights of Libya. Adoption of the draft resolution we are considering today will establish a dangerous additional precedent, especially for the South. It is not sufficient to impose resolutions against uh, selective countries and mandates. Now they are trying to take a new step toward legitimizing selectivity and establishing a human rights council, which is increasingly at the service of a certain number of countries, as was the case with the discredited Human Rights Commission. For all of these reasons, the Cuban delegation will vote against the draft resolution contained in document L4. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Cuba. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Senegal. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, uh, just as the rest of the international community, Senegal is profoundly concerned by the uh, the terrible cost of the, the war in Ukraine, which has already led to uh, thousands of deaths, refugees and IGPs. To this somber picture uh, can be added allegations of severe violations of human rights. Uh, everywhere not, uh, and throughout history, uh, war is a failure of humanity. Sen Senegal is in favor of peace in uh, Ukraine. Senegal is always is also in favor of Ukraine of peace in Ukraine because our countries are collateral uh, victims of this uh, global crisis due to its severe consequences, particularly serious for our economies and our people. Senegal is for de-escalation and for the immediate uh, stoppage of uh, hostilities in Ukraine and for uh, negotiations in order to reach a peaceful and lasting solution to the crisis. This is uh, the essence of the communique published on the 24th of February 2022 by His Excellency President Macky Sall in his capacity as the uh, uh, current president of the African Union. This is a communique that calls, and I quote, for the imperative respect of international law, the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, end of quote. This is also the uh, purpose of uh, Senegal's support for resolution 11 slash two of the special session of the General Assembly on the 24th of March of this year on the uh, humanitarian consequences of the war in Ukraine. It's also the what's behind our vote in favor of resolution uh, resolution 49 slash one of the human rights council of the 4th of march of this year on the human rights situation in ukraine and in particular uh, establishing a commission international commission of inquiry on the allegation of violations of human rights in the country as a result of the war we believe that it is the publication of the conclusions of this uh, in, uh, commission that will give us a full uh, overview of the of the nature and the scope of the violations this overview will therefore give us the ex exact type of uh, uh, sanctions that should be envisaged now this resolution uh, decides a on a uh, sanction measures before the com inquiry commission that we have established uh, delivers its outcome. So it anticipates on the work of this commission. Bearing in mind all these considerations, the Senegal will abstain on voting from this text to be consistent with the resolution of the Human Rights Council of the 4th of March. 
uh, setting up an international commission of inquiry on the uh, human rights violations in Ukraine. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Senegal. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of South Africa. Mr. President, South Africa is deeply concerned about the continuing conflict in Ukraine, the loss of lives, and the deteriorating humanitarian situation. We reiterate our view that as a matter of urgency, there must be a cessation of hostilities, which would be the first step in a comprehensive response to the humanitarian crisis. South Africa stresses once again that dialogue, mediation, and diplomacy is the only path to end the current conflict. Wars end when dialogues begin, and wars endure when there is no dialogue. In this regard, we welcome the efforts by Ukraine and Russia to hold talks without preconditions. South Africa expresses the hope that both parties will use diplomacy to de-escalate the situation in Ukraine, leading to a durable political and security situation. We maintain that all parties have much to gain from a negotiated outcome and much to lose from unnecessary and violent conflict. The General Assembly must therefore encourage mediation and dialogue and adopt constructive outcomes leading to that. Mr. President, South Africa is deeply concerned at the reports of civilian casualties in Ukraine. As the international community, we cannot be indifferent to the killing and suffering of civilians. The humanitarian crisis that has resulted from the ongoing military operations must be addressed, and there must be an urgent opening of humanitarian corridors and the provision of aid to the civilian population, which, as usual, bears the brand of the suffering when violent confrontation breaks out. All parties to the conflict must comply with international human rights and humanitarian law, including the Geneva Conventions, and must respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all member states in keeping with the UN Charter. Mr. President, on 4th March 2022, the Human Rights Council adopted a resolution authorizing the establishment of an international commission of inquiry to investigate all alleged violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international law and related crimes in Ukraine. The commission has not yet commenced its work and we await its findings on the allegations of gross violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law. South Africa is of the firm belief that the tabling of the resolution that we will consider today is premature and prejudges the outcomes of the Commission of Inquiry. We must allow the Commission to urgently undertake its mandate and report to the Human Rights Council and the General Assembly on its outcomes. It is also imperative that all parties to the conflict must allow the Commission to perform its duties without any hindrance and interference. Mr. President, we recall Resolution 6251, which is the basis of the resolution before us and which established the Human Rights Council, also recognizes inter alia, I quote, the importance of ensuring universality, objectivity, and non-selectivity in the consideration of human rights issues and the elimination of double standards and politicization, close quote. Unfortunately, the resolution that we are considering today will further divide and polarize the matter and the General Assembly itself without following due process. South Africa maintains 
that in considering the suspension of a member of the Human Rights Council, we must be consistent and not selective, as this would undermine the credibility of the General Assembly and the Human Rights Council. For these reasons, South Africa will abstain on the resolution. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Egypt. Say the Rais. Mr. President, Egypt does not view the draft resolution before us as a resolution related to the situation in the Ukraine, the principle of a non-use of uh, force in uh, relations amongst nations. We rather um, are concerned of the functions and mandates of United Nations bodies. Our principal position rejects the current tendency since it undermines the purposes for which the organization, its bodies and agencies were established, as well as its credibility and multilateral work. Egypt considers that what we are doing today in considering the draft resolution represents a serious crossroads for the United Nations in its entire existence. The organization's respect for its charter, its rules of procedure, and its methods of work led the international community to rely on it in all international issues based on rules and regulations that are applied in the conduct of international relations with a view to preserving international peace and security, peace and security that are in danger at this moment. The current draft resolution undermines the methods of work of the organization that have enjoyed the trust of the international community and uh, threatens to undermine the credibility of the United Nations and its organizations, leading to further negative repercussions on the organization's ability to fulfill its role in accordance with its charter and as it has done for 75 years. Egypt is uh, does not feel comfortable with double standards and partiality. Many times before, such resolutions were not adopted in cases of human rights violations that are not so far back in time. We are concerned with the violations of human rights and the uh, obligations of all states in this regard. And we believe that such serious violations should be dealt with decisively in accordance with the United Nations rules and procedures uh, in an adequate manner. Based on all of this, Egypt does not believe that the draft resolution is being proposed at the right moment, and we warn of it. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Egypt. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Brazil. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, we are deeply concerned about allegations of gross violations of human rights and humanitarian law in Ukraine, including recent reports coming from the region of Bucha. The images of extreme violence against civilians and the high number of deaths, many of them with signs of torture and ill treatment, 
are profoundly disturbing. Our deep sympathy goes to all victims and their families. The Human Rights Council created last month a commission of inquiry with a mandate to establish the facts and circumstances that may amount to violations and abuses of human rights and of humanitarian law in Ukraine. We call on all parties to cooperate with the Commission so that it can fulfill its mandate and provide us with an unbiased and precise information on the situation on the ground. Brazil has decided to abstain in today's vote as it believes the Commission of Inquiry should be allowed to complete its independent investigation so that responsibilities can be ascertained. Only then would this General Assembly be in a position to better assess and take a responsible and informed decision on the status of Russia in the Council. We must at all costs avoid repeating the mistakes of the old Commission on Human Rights, particularly concerning politicization, double standards and selectivity, which had been the main flaw of the pre previous human rights system and the object of well-founded criticism of its work. The Human Rights Council should be guided by the imperative of inclusive dialogue as the main instrument for cooperation, sustainable solutions, and peace. Mr. President, Brazil is fully committed to finding ways to an immediate cessation of hostilities and to promoting a real dialogue conducive to a peaceful and sustainable solution. Ensuring respect for human rights and humanitarian law, protecting civilians, calling for peace. These are the objectives that should unite rather than divide us. There is no alternative to a negotiated solution and to a constructive and balanced approach aimed at preserving spaces of dialogue. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Brazil. I now wish to invite the distinguished representative of China. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, on the Ukraine issue, China always believes that the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries, including Ukraine, should be respected, that the purposes and principles of the UN Charter should be upheld, that the legitimate security concerns of all countries should be taken seriously, and that all efforts conducive to a peaceful settlement of the crisis should be supported. Putting an early end to the fight is the urgent expectation of the international community. It is also what China is striving for. China supports all initiatives and measures that will help ease the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. We call on the parties concerned to respect international humanitarian law and take concrete actions to ensure the safety of civilians and protect the basic rights and humanitarian needs of women, children, and other vulnerable groups. The reports and images of civilian deaths in Bucha are disturbing. The relevant circumstances and specific causes of the incident must be verified and established. Any accusations should be based on facts. Before a full picture is clear, all sides should exercise restraint and avoid unfounded accusations. Mr. President, Dialogue and negotiation is the only way out of the Ukraine crisis. China always believes that the international community should remain rational, strengthen unity, and do more to facilitate dialogue and negotiation and the political settlement. It should not set up obstacles or add resistance, let alone adding fuel, fuel to the fire to aggregate confrontations. We regret to see that the conflict has caused civilian casualties and massive displacements. And the all dimensional indiscriminate sanctions without a bottom line have brought serious negative impact 
on the post-pandemic recovery, creating new and complex problems, reversing hard-won development gains, and making the realization of the 2030 agenda even more difficult. People around the world, especially those in developing countries, have to bear the soaring oil and food prices. Life amid the pandemic has become even more difficult, and the rights of women and children even more difficult to be protected. Developing countries are not parties to the conflict, yet they are forced to get involved in this geopolitical competition and great power rivalry. This is unfair. Some individual countries, while talking loudly about peace, are, a bit, are obsessed with creating block confrontations, including provoking tensions in the Asia-Pacific region. This self-conflicting and self-serving practice is very dangerous and worrying and should be resolutely rejected. Mr. President, China always calls for promoting and promoting human rights through constructive dialogues and cooperation on the basis of equality and mutual respect. At the same time, we firmly oppose the politicization or instrumentalization of human rights issues oppose the selective and confrontational approaches, as well as double standards on human rights issues, and oppose exerting pressure onto other countries in the name of human rights. Those are also important elements contained in General Assembly Resolution 60-25, which set up the Human Rights Council. The draft resolution before us will deprive a country's legitimate membership in the Human Rights Council. Such an important matter must be handled with the utmost delicacy based on facts, with calmness, objectivity, and reason based on facts and truth. Nevertheless, this draft resolution was not drafted in an open and transparent manner, nor did it follow the tradition of holding consultations with the entire membership to heed the broadest opinions. Under these circumstances, such a hasty move at the General Assembly, which forces countries to choose sides, will aggravate the decision among the division among member states and intensify the confrontation between the parties concerned. It is like adding fuel to the fire, which is not conducive to the escalation of the conflicts and even less so to advance in the peace talks. Dealing with the membership of the human rights. Council is such a way will set new dangerous precedent, further intensify confrontation in the field of human rights, bringing a greater impact on the UN governance system and produce serious consequences. Therefore, China will have to vote against this draft resolution. China calls on all parties to work together in the same direction so as to create opportunities for peace and prospects for negotiation. China will continue to hold an objective and impartial position and play its responsible and constructive role in this regard. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of China. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Mexico. Señor Presidente, Mr. President, Mexico has been clear and categorical in condemning the invasion by Russia against Ukraine since it violates international law, the Charter of the United Nations, and the constitutional principles of our foreign policy. We have also condemned attacks against the civilian population and its infrastructure. We have promoted everything which facilitates access to humanitarian assistance, and we have joined those voices which call for the immediate cessation of hostilities. Recent reports about the situation in Ukraine show us that we are facing a probable commission of serious violations of international law and 
uh, the international law of human rights and of humanitarian international law. Mexico has thus uh, clearly backed the Secretary General's call to conduct impartial investigations which may allow identifying those responsible and have effective accountability. My country also supported the adoption of Resolution 49 Stroke 1 of the Human Rights Council to establish an independent commission of inquiry in order to uh, uh, investigate all of the alleged abuses and violations of human rights and anything which could violate humanitarian international law uh, flowing from Russia, Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Mexico also follows attentively the process of in, uh, inquiry of the International Criminal Court of alleged international crimes committed in Ukraine and clearly supports the work done by the prosecutor to uh, establish and clear and clarify the facts. We are following the development of the case brought before the International Court of Justice, and we reiterate its call to comply with the recent um, provisional measures uh, for a, an immediate cessation of hostilities. These are judicial and quasi-judicial processes which are underway, but which have not yet, in legal terms, classified these situations under consideration. We must be consistent. We must support, support them until they reach their ultimate uh, conclusions and examine them rigorously. Whether Russia is a member of the Human Rights Council or not, is not a factor which exempts it from uh, obligations under international law or which imposes obligations. The central point here should be to bring to justice those responsible, not to suspend a state from membership in a subsidiary body of this assembly in which all member states without exception must be accountable under the same rules and the same criteria. Mexico is in favor of accountability being regularly practiced throughout the United Nations system. We do need more transparency, but to that end, we also need more cooperation, more dialogue and better practices. Multilateral structures are strengthened through inclusion, not through exclusion. To exclude, to suspend is not the solution. Multilateralism will be strengthened to the extent that it is able to maintain its inclusiveness. Prior resolutions of this assembly, which we have supported with conviction, condemn the Russian invasion, call for a clear cessation of hostilities, urge the unrestricted access to humanitarian assistance, and advocate for a diplomatic solution to the conflict. Mexico has stated its position explicitly with regard to uh, Russia's military aggression against Ukraine through its statements in the Security Council and in this General Assembly as well as in the votes taken in both bodies since the beginning of the conflict. In view of the above, Mexico will abstain from supporting the draft resolution which suspends uh, Russia from membership in the Human Rights Council. Mexico is convinced that even in the midst of the war, all channels should be maintained for dialogue with the authorities of the Russian Federation, not only so that they cooperate with all the mechanisms which are part of the universal system of protection of human rights, but also to insist on the urgent need to find in dialogue the diplomatic solution which restores peace in Ukraine. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Mexico. 
I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Chile. Thank you, Mr. President. Allow me to start my intervention by paying tribute to the brutal war that is taking place in Ukraine uh, caused by uh, an aggression that violated international law, international humanitarian law, and the UN Charter. The tragic images of uh, Bucha that, that uh, uh, came to our homes uh, uh, last week uh, moved us tremendously. We condemn the invasion of the Ukraine. The decision that uh, uh, we are discussing is a decision that my country would have never wanted to uh, discuss. We are fully in favor of multilateralism. The multilateral system is a home for everyone. However, to be a member of the Human Rights Council uh, uh, involves certain requirements, including uh, uh, conduct consistent with the promotion and protection of human rights everywhere as uh, member states of this assembly uh, adopted uh, a re relevant resolution which states that the members of the security of the human rights council must uh, follow the strict standards in the promotion and protection of human rights that same resolution in paragraph 8 entrusts to this assembly the responsibility of suspending a member state from the council when that state does not comply with these strict norms of protecting and promoting human rights our responsibility to human rights, uh, rather than a uh, specific country or uh, Russia or Ukraine, our responsibilities to human rights and uh, the, the suspension of the Russian Federation from the Human Rights Council uh, mean, uh, in this case, we're talking about a state that is violating the rights of a third state, Ukraine. And this is a result of an unacceptable aggression and invasion that is uh, uh, contravenes international law. This is why my, our delegation will vote in favor of the resolution L.4, which suspends the membership of Russia from the Human Rights Council. Chile once again reiterates its appeal to all parties to continue negotiations and uh, urges for an immediate and peaceful resolution of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine through a political dialogue negotiations through peaceful means in conformity with international law. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Chile. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belarus. Mr. President, Belarus is categorically against the draft resolution under consideration. The uh, uh, introduction of this uh, draft is motivated ex by exclusively political interests aimed at demonizing the Russian Federation and attempting to isolate it in international organizations. Such ideas lead to upsetting the equilibrium of the entire system of international cooperation, which is based on the UN Charter. And uh, it could have a long-term negative impact, uh, uh, even leading to the destruction of the UN as a whole. In essence, today's uh, proposal to exclude Russia is a direct contribution to uh, uh, destroying the Human Rights Council itself and in consolidating the destruction of the uh, system of upholding human rights under the UN auspices, which has been expressed over the past few weeks by, in uh, uh, attitudes of racism, xenophobia, and other manifestations of discrimination based on language, culture, religion, or other characteristics that we're seeing in Western countries. It's important to focus not on short-term immediate tasks under the influence of emotions, but rather to think about the long-term prospects of resolving conflict situations and about the post-conflict post world order. The uh, resolution that we're, that is being proposed just like other steps on on restricting the participation of Russia in international organizations, will not only not make a contribution to resolving the situation in Ukraine, but rather will uh, in, increase risks for uh, any possibility of the peaceful negotiations, which were initiated, I just want to recall, a month ago 
by the Republic of Belarus and uh, personally its president, Alexander Lukashenko. So we, ca we call on you to think about, to reflect on this and to vote against the uh, proposed draft resolution. Thank you for your attention. I thank the distinguished representative of Belarus. We have heard the last speaker in explanation of vote before the vote. The Assembly will now take a decision on a draft resolution A slash ES dash 11 slash L4 entitled Suspension of the Rights of the Membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council. Pursuant to resolution 60 slash 251 of 15 March 2006, the General Assembly, by a two-thirds majority of members present and voting, may suspend the rights of membership in the Council of a member of the Council that commits gross and systematic, systematic violation of human rights. For your information, the draft resolution has closed for e-sponsorship. I now give the floor to the representative of the Secretary. Thank you, Mr. President. I should like to announce that since the submission of the draft resolution, and in addition to the delegations listed on the L document, the following countries have also become co-sponsors of A stroke ES stroke, sorry, A stroke ES 11 stroke L4, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Myanmar, and San Marino. If any other countries wish to co-sponsor A stroke ES 11 stroke L4, please signify by pressing the microphone button now. I see none. I thank you. Sorry, Tonga. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Secretariat. A recorded vote has been requested. We shall now begin the voting process. Those in favor of draft resolution A slash ES 11 slash L4, please signify. Those against, abstentions. The General Assembly is now voting on draft resolution A stroke ES 11 stroke L4, entitled Suspension of the Rights of Membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council. Will all delegations confirm that their votes are accurately reflected on the screen? The voting has been completed. Please lock the machine. The result of the vote is as follows. In favor, 93. Against, 24. Abstentions, 58. Draft resolution A slash ES 11 slash L4 is adopted. Before giving the floor for explanations of votes after the vote, may I remind delegations that explanations of vote are limited to 10 minutes and should be made by delegations from their seats. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of India. Thank you, Mr. President. India has abstained on the resolution adopted in the General Assembly today. We do so for reasons of both substance and process. 
Since the inception of the Ukrainian conflict, India has stood for peace, dialogue and diplomacy. We believe that no solution can be arrived at by shedding blood and at the cost of innocent lives. If India has chosen any side, it is a side of peace and it is for an immediate end to violence. We continue to remain deeply concerned at the worsening situation and reiterate our call for end to all hostilities. When innocent human lives are at stake, diplomacy must prevail as the only viable option. Recent reports of civilian killings in Busha are deeply disturbing. We have unequivocally condemned these killings and support the call for an independent investigation. The impact of the crisis has also been felt beyond the region with increasing food and energy costs, especially for many developing countries. It is in our collective interest to work constructively, both inside the United Nations and outside, towards seeking an early resolution to the conflict. India has been at the forefront of protecting human rights, right from the drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We firmly believe that all decisions should be taken fully respecting due process, as all our democratic polity and structures enjoin us to do so. This applies to international organizations as well, particularly the United Nations. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of India. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Timor-Leste. At the outset, I would like to thank you, Mr. President, for reconvening this session. Mr. President, the position we took today to vote in favor of this resolution before all of us is a manifestation of our strong solidarity with the people of Ukraine, especially the victims of this war who have been forced to shelter and have fled across the country's borders, as well as those who have lost their homes, their lives, their family members, and their own lives. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of them and their families and friends. Mr. President, our vote today shows our clear position to uphold human rights values in all circumstances and in all cases as the dark period of our own history has taught us enough on the high cost of being victims of war. We call for an effective ceasefire in Ukraine and urge conflict parties to continue the dialogue and negotiation to stop this war and avoid further potentially catastrophic escalation. We commend the efforts of those who have facilitated the peace talks between conflict parties and all for more diplomatic initiatives to help in finding a peaceful solution for all. All parties must ensure the safety and protection of all civilians. It is our hope that peace is reclaimed immediately and that the important for work for a healthy, prosperous and sustainable future is restored for all. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Timor-Leste. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Qatar. Thank you, Mr. President. We abstained from voting on the resolution that has been just adopted in this emergency special session, and I would like to make the following statement to explain our position. Qatar has expressed its position vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, uh, the situation in Ukraine, which is anchored in its firm observance of the principles embedded in the international law and the United Nations Charter, including the inadmissibility of the use of force or the threat of the threat of use of force in international relations and the importance of settling international conflicts peacefully together with abstaining from interference in the internal affairs of countries and to uphold the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of countries. And we have reiterated 
that the insurance of the safety of civilians should have the priority, and we stress the importance of upholding the international humanitarian law together with protecting civilian infrastructure and facilities and civilians working in the medical and humanitarian fields together with journalists, as well as facilitating the evacuation of civilians and the rapid and safe access to humanitarian aid according to the international principles of delivering humanitarian aid. And we commend the tireless efforts made by the United Nations and international humanitarian organizations to respond to the emergency uh, humanitarian needs. And we continue to communicate with international partners to assess the humanitarian situation and to deliver the necessary aid to the Ukrainian uh, people. Mr. President, we reiterate the call by the Secretary General to revert to the path of dialogue and negotiations and for an immediate ceasefire. We also reiterate Qatar's call for all parties to the conflict to self of, for self-restraint and uh, to resort to, diplom to diplomacy and dialogue. And Qatar will continue to harness its diplomatic efforts to reach a solution and resolution for the crisis according to the UN uh, Charter and the international uh, law. And we do welcome the Turkish intermediation uh, mediation between Russia and Ukraine. And we hope that the negotiations will culminate into into a peace accord between both countries. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Qatar. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic. Mr. President, the Lao PDR once again reiterates its call for peaceful political and diplomatic solution to the conflict and supports all ongoing efforts and peace negotiations between the parties concerned. Likewise, we urge the international community to refrain from any action that could fuel escalation of tension. As party, to nine of, as party to seven of the nine core human rights treaties, Lao Pidia opposes all gross and systematic violations and abuses of human rights. We are gravely concerned by the recent reports and accusations of human rights and international human rights law violations and abuses. We are of the view that such serious allegation must not be taken lightly and must be backed up by solid evidence and verified by an independent investigation mechanism of the United Nations, especially the Human Rights Council Independent International Committee inquiries. My delegation voted against the draft resolution L4 because we believe that the reports of violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law must be verified by credible, neutral, impartial, and independent assessment mechanism before any action is taken. Laupedia is concerned by the notion that any of member states of the UN Human Rights Council can be subject to suspension and other punitive measures without due process of investigation and verification. As this issue is of paramount importance for all United Nations members, we, all, we also believe that all GA resolutions should be adopted by consensus reflecting the spirit of equality, solidarity among UN member states. In, in conclusion, my delegation believes there is a dire need for more clarification through an independent mechanism that should be accepted and supported by all member states before drawing conclusion and passing judgment. We remain hopeful that the most urgent task now is to create the environment conducive for a peaceful resolution to the conflict and immediate ceasefire agreement, which will eventually lead to total cessation of hostilities. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Indonesia. Thank you, Mr. President. It is distressing to see the hostilities in Ukraine persist 
and the number of civilians and casualties continue to rise. We share the international community's deep concern regarding the devastating human rights and humanitarian situation in Ukraine. And we do not take lightly report, reports of gross and systemic violations and abuse of human rights, including recent reports from Bucha. For these reasons, we believe the Human Rights Council must remain seized on the matter and supports the Secretary General's call for a thorough and independent investigation. We also fully support the establishment of an independent international commission of inquiry by the Human Rights Council. Mr. President, there is no question that those responsible for violations and abuse of human rights in Ukraine must be held accountable and brought to justice. The Commission, therefore, must receive full support and access needed to effectively carry out its mandate. In the meantime, we have to give a chance for the Commission to work in an objective and transparent manner and present its findings and reports. We must allow due diligence and not prejudice and not prejudge the work of the Commission. The General Assembly must also be prudent. It is important. Members. Moreover, the General Assembly's action must not create negative precedents that can undermine the credibility of this August body. It is for these reasons Indonesia abstained on Resolution L4. Mr. President, Indonesia remains steadfast in our commitment to respect and protect human rights for all. Our priority now must be to save lives and protect civilians in Ukraine. We reaffirm our call to all parties to stop the hostilities and to spare no efforts to achieve peace through dialogue and diplomacy. This is the only way we can end the suffering and senseless loss of lives in Ukraine and to prevent the increasing negative impact of the war beyond the region. So we must stop the war, and I repeat, we must stop the war now, otherwise we will all suffer. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Indonesia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Panama. Panama decidido votar. Panama decided to vote in favor of the resolution suspension of the rights of membership of the Russian Federation and the Human Rights Council, since it supports the principles and purposes of the UN Charter and the pillar of human rights. And especially because member states must abide by their commitments in the area of human rights when elected to this principal organ of the United Nations. Panama is faithful to multilateralism and the defense of human rights and supports the participation of member states and in international bodies. Thus, in general terms, we do not support the separating a member state from membership in multilateral fora. This decision is taken in a context of flagrant gravity, given gross and systematic violations of human rights against civilians in Ukraine. Panama, concerned over the Syria situation, finds itself faced with the imperative of supporting this initiative, which has taken the General Assembly of the UN to consider the temporary suspension of a member state of this principal human rights body. Mr. President, we already lived through this in 2011, when a state, Libya, was suspended from the Human Rights Council for a period of eight months. Panama at that time supported this temporary initiative and co-sponsored the resolution which permitted its admission. Panama votes today hoping that the decision will be temporary, prioritizing that member states will support principles for respect for the highest human rights standards. We therefore highlight the need to guarantee universality in considering human rights issues, including the application of paragraph, paragraph 8 of Resolution 60 stroke 251 to avoid contradictions in evaluating cases of human rights violations. Mr. President, I conclude by appealing 
once again are called to dialogue and diplomacy toward a peaceful settlement of the conflict. We are fully convinced that it will be through dialogue and understanding that this devastating conflict will end and we will return to the path of peace and solidarity. Thank you. I thank the, dis the distinguished representative of Panama. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Thailand. Uh, Mr. President, Thailand voted to abstain on the resolution because of the overriding importance that we attach to a transparent, impartial, and inclusive approach in the multilateral regime. A decision to suspend the membership of a member state in any United Nations body cannot be taken lightly. The process must be done through careful consultations based on principles, verified facts, and taking into account constructive opinions as well as foreseeable consequences. We express our deepest condolences to the people of Ukraine and the bereaved families uh, who lost their loved ones from the ongoing war in Ukraine. We are deeply concerned with the escalation of conflicts and humanitarian crises in Ukraine, while believing that prompt action must be taken in response to all alleged human rights atrocities against civilians, including in Bucha, we are of the view that any action taken should be impartial, transparent, and comprehensive. To objectively consider the situations, it would require well-rounded established facts and additional concrete evidence proven by reliable sources, including those presented to international courts. We thus support the United Nations Secretary General's call for an independent investigation to ensure accountability and hope that the Independent International Commission of Inquiry established by the Human Rights Council would be able to commence its work soonest to investigate the serious allegations in an impartial, transparent, and comprehensive manner. We strongly urge all parties to fully comply with international humanitarian law and international human rights law and to protect civilians and civilian objects as well as ensure unhindered provision of humanitarian assistance without discrimination. Another life lost is another life too many. On our part, Thailand continues to provide humanitarian assistance to support those suffering from the conflict in Ukraine, in line with the HRC's principles of non-selectivity and constructive dialogue. We reiterate our strong support of the continuation of political dialogues as the only way to end a humanitarian crisis uh, is to end the dispute. Thus, Thailand once again calls for utmost efforts by all parties and the international community to cease and desist the aggravation of fighting and continue our ma maximum endeavor on ending the conflict. Thailand reiterates our call for a continuation of political dialogues between the parties, con between the concerned parties to find peaceful and sustainable solutions. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Thailand. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Vietnam. Mr. President, Vietnam has maintained a principled and steadfast position in support of resolving conflicts by peaceful means and with respect for the United Nations Charter, international law, including the principles of sovereign equality respect for independence and territorial integrity of states, and refrain from the threat or use of force. We have followed clo closely with great concerns over the situation in Ukraine, with severe consequences for the people. It is with extreme concern that we learn of recent reports of great, losses, great loss of life among innocent civilians. Vietnam opposes and condemns own forms of attacks against civilians in violation of international law, international humanitarian law, and international human rights law. Recent information in this regard should be examined based on objective and transparent verification with the cooperation of parties concerned. We have time and again reiterated that it is imperative to immediately cease the use of force to avoid further civilian casualties and losses, 
as well as damages to civilian infrastructure. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine, if not resolved peacefully and expeditiously, will continue to affect the entire world, given the spillover effects now seen across regions. We are therefore convinced that the only way forward is to de-escalate tensions, resume dialogue and negotiation through all channels with a view to achieving long-term solutions that take into consideration the interest and concern of all parties in accordance with international law. There is no viable alternative. International efforts should be carried out in a prudent manner in order to be conducive to reaching a final solution. Discussion and decisions undertaken by international organizations and agencies should follow their established procedures and working methods. In this vein, we have the view that the deliberation and decisions taken by the General Assembly should be based on impartial information, broad consultations with member states, dialogue and negotiations among related parties is the most feasible way forward to a peaceful, comprehensive solution. It is our hope that the United Nations and member states will work together toward this end. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Vietnam. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cambodia. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm taking the floor to explain our vote on the draft resolution on the suspension of the rights of membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council after the vote. The spectrum of isolation of a member state through the suspension of its right in a UN body will not help resolve the conflict, but only trigger and intensify the situation. After a fragile time for peace world, world peace, security and stability, the engagement among the member states in all relevant UN bodies, including Human Rights Council, is very important. Resolving the conflict in Ukraine based on the UN Charter and the international law through creating a conducive environment for diplomatic engagement and negotiation by the concerned parties should be the right path to be focused toward ending the tremendous human suffering and achieving a sustainable, peaceful solution in Ukraine. At this critical juncture, we must try to work in solidarity to address the conflict in Ukraine and to avoid creating a, mis a trust deficit among the membership. Building trust and confidence is absolutely important to deal with the current situation. With that explanation, Cambodia voted abstain on resolution L4. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Cambodia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Uzbekistan. Mr. President, Uzbekistan adheres to a balanced, neutral position on the current situation in Ukraine and hope that the parties will find mutually acceptable way to resolve the situation pursuing solely a political and diplomatic path based on the universal recognized principle and norms of international law. At the same time, the delegation of Uzbekistan voted against the resolution on suspension of the rights of membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council, given our strong conviction that any decision under OP8 of the GA Resolution 60-251 authorizing General Assembly by two-thirds majority of the members present and voting suspend the right of membership in the Council of a member of the Council that commit gross and systematic violation of human rights should be based on the outcome of thorough investigation of the alleged violation. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Uzbekistan. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malaysia. Mr. President, Malaysia remains deeply concerned with the worsening situation in Ukraine and continues to closely monitor developments, including the humanitarian situation on the ground. 
we are greatly disturbed with reports of alleged human rights abuses and violations. We firmly believe that those who commit gross violations of human rights must be held accountable. We also firmly believe that it is imperative that such atrocities be verified in an impartial, transparent, and credible manner. In this regard, we support the call by the Secretary General to immediately commence independent investigations to guarantee effective accountability. Thus, Malaysia is of the view that the critical decision, such as the suspension of a member of the Human Rights Council, must not be made in haste and should not prejudge the outcome of such investigations. A decision of such an important matter must be accorded the same equal treatment and due processes as in the past in the full spirit and letter of the resolution 60-251. Taking into account all the aforementioned considerations, Malaysia has decided to abstain on the resolution presented today. Mr. President, Malaysia strongly urges all concerned parties to immediately take steps to de-escalate, continue to progress towards dialogue and negotiations to, to prevent further loss of lives and devastation. We reiterate the need to respect and protect civilian life and infrastructure. We also reiterate the call on all parties to fully comply with their obligations under international humanitarian law and international human rights law. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Malaysia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Singapore. Mr. President, Singapore abstained on the resolution that has just been adopted. Singapore condemns in the strongest possible terms the Russian Federation's invasion of Ukraine and continuing attacks on Ukrainian cities, civilians, and civilian infrastructure. We reiterate our full support for the sovereignty, political independence, and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Singapore's position on this has been clear and consistent from the beginning of this war. This is why we co-sponsored and voted in support of Resolution ES 11-1, Resolution ES 11-2, and also co-sponsored Human Rights Council Resolution 49-1. Mr. President, Singapore is gravely concerned and distressed by the latest reports and images from Bucha and other Ukrainian towns of high civilian casualties and destruction of civilian infrastructure. We strongly condemn any violations of human rights and international humanitarian law. In this regard, we urge the full and urgent implementation of Resolution ES 11-1 Resolution ES 11-2 and Human Rights Council Resolution 49-1. In particular, we note the establishment of an independent international commission of inquiry to investigate all alleged violations of abuses of human rights in Ukraine and await the completion of its work and its findings. There must be accountability for any gross and systematic human rights violations that have taken place in the war in Ukraine. We urge all parties to cooperate with the commission and allow full and unhindered access for the Commission to gather evidence and conduct its work. We must spare no effort to protect the civilian population in Ukraine and to ensure safe and unhindered humanitarian access to all those in need. We continue to call on the Russian Federation to cease its offensive military operations immediately, to remain engaged in meaningful negotiations with Ukraine, and to work towards a peaceful settlement in accordance with the UN Charter and international law. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Singapore. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, Brunei Darussalam expresses concern over the escalation of tension and military action in Ukraine and continues to closely monitor developments in the country. Brunei Darussalam condemns any violation of sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of any country and reiterates the importance of upholding the principle of a rule-based framework and respect the international law. Brunei Darussalam strongly believes that constructive dialogue and engagement among all parties concerned is essential to seek a peaceful solution 
we further believe that the suspension of member states is counterproductive in addressing any concern any, and may further aggravate the already dire situation. Brunei Darussalam reiterates the importance of diplomacy and further calls on all parties directly involved to de-escalate tension and settle all differences by peaceful means without resorting to the threat or use of force in accordance with the UN Charter and international law in the interest of maintaining international peace and stability. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kuwait. Shukran, Sayyid Rais. Thank you, Mr. President. Kuwait abstained in the vote on the draft resolution, which has just been adopted uh, at this special uh, session of the emergency special session of the uh, General Assembly. Uh, we support the human rights bodies which have been established. We protect those organs against the politi politicization. We wish to strengthen dialogue and objectivity in, mat in matters of human rights. We condemn all violations of humanitarian international law and violations of human rights by anyone and uh, whatever the place where the acts are committed. We have followed with concern all of the images and information which we have uh, had in recent days, which have revealed the extent of the violations of international law and humanitarian international law against unarmed civilians. And we appeal to the United Nations Secretary General to conduct an international inquiry which is transparent uh, on these crimes, to know who are the perpetrators, and to confirm uh, all parties to the conflict should respect their commitments under international law, including the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and the optional protocols as well as uh, international law to protect civilians, civilian sites, and in order to protect workers in humanitarian terms and medical personnel, as well as humanitarian workers. It is important to guarantee uh, the delivery of humanitarian assistance to those in need. We reaffirm that, uh, and we welcome the efforts made by United Nations bodies to uh, put uh, an end to hostilities. Ever since the start of the war and military operations in Ukraine, Kuwait has reaffirmed its position of principle, which is to respect United Nations principles, respect the territorial integrity, independence, and sovereignty of states and non-interference in their internal affairs. We must not use force or or use threat of force and end conflicts by peaceful means. We renew our appeal to end hostilities and to undertake negotiations between the parties in question in order to reach a peaceful solution to spare the world and the region from any serious repercussions. Thank you. The distinguished representative of Kuwait. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kyrgyzstan. Mr. President, according to paragraph 8 of the UN General Assembly Resolution 60-251, Human Rights Council, the General Assembly may suspend the rights of membership in the Human Rights Council of a member of the Council that commits gross and systematic violations of human rights. This paragraph requires that there should be confirmed facts of gross and systematic violations of human rights. Our position at the moment is that we should wait for the results of impartial investigations into all possible gross and systematic violations of human rights in Ukraine, including the results of the investigation of the Independent International Commission of Inquiry, established by the resolution of the UN Human Rights Council number 49-1. We are following the situation in Ukraine with great concern. It is especially alarming that fraternal peoples are involved in this conflict and human casualties could not be avoided. We express our grave concern over the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Ukraine. In this regard, it is important to ensure the full protection of civilians, 
primarily women and children, as well as medical and humanitarian personnel. What is happening today, it is a real tragedy, the occurrence of which, unfortunately, was allowed by the entire world community. Kyrgyzstan expresses the opinion that the text of the draft resolution under consideration today on the suspension of membership of the Russian Federation in the UN Human Rights Council is characterized as politically driven. We are in favor of conducting an independent investigation, examine the results and facts provided by both sides. Mr. President, our position is clear. Any conflict must be resolved exclusively by political and diplomatic means, including through the creation of new formats and mechanisms. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Kyrgyzstan. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. President. To Jadid al Jazair, Algeria reaffirms its firm attachment to the fundamental rules and principles of the international humanitarian law and international human rights law, in particular the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Instruments for the Protection and Promo Promotion of Human Rights, and expresses its firm condemnation of any proven violation of international obligations in this domain. There is no doubt the images we have seen in some cities uh, are shocking and uh, condemnable, and the alleged crimes they imply are of the utmost gravity. However, it is imperative to allow the existing UN mechanisms to investigate the facts on the ground in an impartial manner so that justice is done for all the victims, innocent victims. Ensuring that the competent UN mechanisms fully discharge their mandates in accordance with the rules of international law, including the relevant United Nations resolutions, far from any interference or prejudgment, constitutes for Algeria a sine qua non condition to establish the facts about the gross and systematic violations of human rights. In this regard, Algeria calls for respect of the principles of universality, objectivity, and non-selectivity on which the Human Rights Council is founded and preserve it from any political dispute that might affect its mandate or its impartial treatment of human rights issues in order to foster constructive uh, cooperation and dialogue. My delegation believes that international multilateral efforts require the strengthening of dialogue and cooperation without any exclusion. in order to ensure their effectiveness, despite differences in position. Any attempt to suspend from any UN body an elected member by the international in, in community is not conducive to promote the virtues of multilateralism. While reaffirming its support for direct negotiations between Ukraine and the Russian Federation in order to put an end to military operations, and guarantee an, an urgent response to the humanitarian crisis, Algeria reiterates its call for the intensification of international diplomatic efforts, aiming at uh, uh, preventing the erosion of diplomatic norms and uh, in order to reach as soon as possible a political solution that can preserve the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and the legitimate and vital interests of the countries. My country that has engaged in good faith in a good offices effort through an Arab a group of contacts which has recently met with the, the two concerned parties calls on the entire international community to refrain from any action likely to hamper the ongoing negotiations and prolong the crisis and its global 
um, multi-dimensional consequences. They affect all the countries in the world. In the light of all of these considerations, the delegation of Algeria voted against the draft resolution. Thank you, sir. I thank the distinguished representative of Algeria. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Peru. Gracias, Thank you, Mr. President. Peru voted for a draft resolution A stroke ES 11 stroke L4, thinking of the victims and with the understanding that the decision that has been adopted is based on the general powers of the General Assembly as contained in Article 10 of the Charter and specifically in Article 8 of Resolution 60 stroke 251 of the Assembly, which allows it with a two thirds majority to suspend the rights of membership of a member state in the Human Rights Council when it has incurred in gross and systematic violations of human rights. The act of aggression and the use of force against the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of a state is in and of itself a pattern of violation of the human rights of the affected population. The government of Peru believes that this procedure applied for the second time in the history of the Human Rights Council should be exercised without any manner of selectivity or discrimination of any kind. Suspension in the future should be invoked in any uh, situation similar to the present case, where acts of the use of force, violation of the territorial integrity of another state, and violations of human rights concur. In that context, the context of a resolution adopted in the context of the responsibilities and the mandate of the General Assembly, the government of Peru believes that it does not prejudge the monitoring actions which are being undertaken or may be undertaken by the various mechanisms of the Human Rights Council. Those inquiries must take place without any type of political preconceptions, with independence, neutrality, and with a sole focus on the rights of victims, their protection, and the, and the fight against impunity. In particular, the delegation of Peru believes that the resolution that has been adopted should not prejudge nor predetermine in political terms the work of the independent international uh, commission which the Human Rights Council has established with a mandate to investigate alleged, alleged violations of human rights and humanitarian law, which take place in the context of the armed conflict in Ukraine. In independently from the parties responsible for those violations, as may be determined. These investigations must take place under internationally recognized principles, such as independence, expediency, objectivity, and non-discrimination. This is all the more urgent and imperative in investigating the massacre in the area of Bucha. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Peru. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mr. President. Saudi Arabia abstained on the draft resolution entitled suspension of the membership rights of Russia uh, in the Human Rights Council. This measure, in our view, constitutes a serious precedent that threatens multilateral work and runs counter to the principles of international law and adversely affects the conduct of international organizations. We follow with grave concern 
the deterioration of the situation in the Ukraine, particularly in humanitarian terms. We condemn all violations of international humanitarian law in all forms and wherever they occur. We believe in the importance of protecting civilians and civilian sites in conflict areas. However, we believe that moving to suspend the membership of Russia in the Human Rights Council is an escalatory step that uh, aggravates a, a situation that is already tense and it is not only a form of politicization of the work of the Council, but it also carries a unilateral nature that gives certain more rights than others. Mr. President, my country stresses the right of all states elected to the membership of the Human Rights Council uh, to exercise their full rights in accordance with General Assembly Resolution 60-251 entitled uh, Human Rights Council, which stressed that uh, there should be no selectivity, double standards, or politicization in dealing with human rights issue issues. Mr. President, our abstention today is based on our strong belief that uh, aggravating a situation will adversely affect the dialogue ongoing between the parties with a view to reaching a peaceful settlement that spares the region and the world further adverse effects in political, economic, or humanitarian terms. Thank you. Representative of Saudi Arabia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the United Arab Emirates. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The United Arab Emirates reiterates again our forceful condemnation of all violations of international humanitarian law committed in Ukraine. Civilians are bearing the brunt of this conflict, and this must end, and they must be spared, and parties must comply with their obligations under international law. Determining the facts on the ground is important for justice to be rendered to victims, but also in the longer term to allow communities to heal, to reconcile, and to build sustainable peace. As a member of the Human Rights Council, we voted in favor of Resolution 49-1, urgently establishing an international independent commission of inquiry to investigate all alleged violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law in Ukraine. The members of the commission were appointed on the 30th of March, and their investigations have only just begun. Due process demands that investigative mechanisms be able to conclude their work. Today, we decided to abstain on this resolution because we need to ensure that any decision we take in this General Assembly is based on due process in line with Resolution 60-251. The United Nations is based on the premise of dialogue and constructive engagement with each other, and even with those who hold opposing views to us. The organizations that make up our international system were not established to be a club for the like-minded. We need to preserve spaces in the multilateral arena to talk to each other and not just at each other. And that idea is in the foundational DNA of this organization. Our collective strength lies in our inclusivity. So now is the time to double down on diplomatic outreach in order to reach an immediate cessation of hostilities throughout Ukraine. And we support the ongoing negotiations between Ukraine and Russia and offer our full support to all mediation efforts. Now it is time to find a way through this conflict towards peace. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the United Arab Emirates. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kiribati. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for convening us on this emergency session to deliberate on a draft resolution that's already been passed, uh, which has the effect of suspending a member of the Human Rights Council in line with a provision in a past General Assembly resolution that allows the General Assembly to suspend the rights of a member 
to sit and participate in the Human Rights Council if such members committed gross violations of human rights. Having listened intently to the reasoning advanced from the two sides of this issue, Kiribati decided to vote in support of the resolution on the following grounds. First, the images of hundreds or thousands of human beings killed, of innocent human beings killed in Ukraine during the, the course of the past 42 days is a heart and soul breaking nightmare for all normal, conscientious, and peace-loving human beings. And we do join all peace-loving people of the world in their prayers and calls for a speedy ending to the conflict through friendly and diplomatic dialogue between the parties. As a long-standing member of the Commonwealth of Nations, we believe it is a wise and civilized practice to encourage all its members to be loyal and faithful to the codes of conduct of the Commonwealth, which requires all its members to respect the rules of law, good governance, and the rights and freedoms of human persons, and to deter violations of such codes of conduct through suspension of any defaulting member, and at the same time, allowing time and space for a suspended member to reform its conduct and get back to the agreed code of human conduct. This practice has worked very well in the Commonwealth for decades, and we believe it can also work well for the United Nations on any member who is seen by an overwhelming majority of members to have seriously digressed from the codes of conduct for UN membership. The suspension of Libya in the Human Rights Council in the past show that it is not entirely wrong to agree to a suspension decision at this time. Once again, we join the whole humanity in calling on the parties concerned to put down their arms and to come together and become part of one happy, uh, happy global human family. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Kiribati. We have heard the last speaker in explanations of vote after the vote. We'll now hear statements after the adoption of the resolution. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Russian Federation. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Russian Federation considers the uh, resolution adopted by the General Assembly on the suspension of the membership of the Russian Federation in the Human Rights Council as an illegitimate and politically motivated step with the aim of demonstratively punishing a sovereign member state of the UN conducting an independent uh, domestic and foreign policy. I am authorized to make the following statement. The Russian Federation made a decision about uh, um, about ending or suspending its right, its membership in the Human Rights Council uh, before the end of its term on the 7th of April of this year. Russia has always considered the Human Rights Council as an important component of the universal system of promoting and protecting human rights whose main role is to uh, contribute to the development of a constructive and maximally depoliticized international intergovernmental dialogue on key issues of the human rights agenda. Unfortunately, in today's conditions, the Council is uh, in fact monopolized by one group of states who use it for their short-term aims. Now, those uh, who have uh, claimed that they are the standard in the human rights field, these states for many years have uh, directly been involved in blatant and massive uh, uh, violations of human rights or abetted 
those violations in spite of uh, its membership their membership as members of the council they're not ready to um uh to uh sacrifice their short-term political and economic interests in favor of true cooperation and stabilizing the human rights situation in certain countries such actions violate the mandate entrusted by the international community on the human rights council and overall undermine trust in this body the sincere commitment of russia to uh, promoting and protecting of human rights does not make it possible for us to remain a member of an international mechanism which has become uh, uh, a uh, impl an enabler of the will of uh, the above mentioned group of countries which in order to push through their aims and uh, achieve the necessary amount of, of uh, votes uh, uh, in adopting this decision uh, have uh, resorted to open blackmail of sovereign states the decision that our decision to uh, uh, to stop our membership uh, of the in the Human Rights Council before the end of our term does not mean that we are uh, not going to continue fulfilling our international uh, obligations in the human rights field. The Russian Federation will continue to uh, make its uh, significant contribution in strengthening construct constructive dialogue on human rights and involving all interested uh, sides in the process of collective uh, development and adoption of decisions that meet the interests of all groups of states. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for convening us under the emergency special session. I have the privilege to address the General Assembly on behalf of the European Union and its member states, North Macedonia, Montenegro and Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Iceland and Norway, as well as Ukraine, the Republic of Moldova, Georgia, Andorra, Monaco and San Marino align themselves with this statement. Mr. President, the scale and gravity of Russia's violations of international human rights law and international humanitarian law, as well as the violations of the UN Charter and the territorial integrity and sovereignty of another state, Ukraine, call for strong, united international response. Russia is responsible for a horrific number of casualties, human suffering and forced displacements. Russian armed forces have been relentlessly shelling cities schools, hospitals for well over a month now. The Russian authorities are responsible for the crimes committed while they have effective control of many areas inside Ukraine. They are subject to international law of occupation. The European Union supports all measures to ensure accountability for human rights violations and violations of international humanitarian law in Ukraine by Russian armed forces. The perpetrators of war crimes and other serious violations, as well as the responsible government officials and military leaders, will be held accountable. Today, this assembly has decided that for now the Russian Federation is suspended from the Human Rights Council. Membership in that council is and shall remain open to all member states of the United Nations. But those members commit to uphold the highest standards in the promotion and protection of human rights. Russia has violated those criteria through its activities in Ukraine. The decision to suspend the Russian Federation, which the EU and its member states have supported today, implements the 2006 General Assembly Resolution establishing the Human Rights Council, which foresees suspension of members that commit gross and systematic violations of human rights. Suspension is necessary to uphold the integrity of the Human Rights Council, the authority of the General Assembly, and the credibility of the UN human rights system. The rare decision this Assembly has taken today sends a strong signal of accountability and hopefully will help preventing and discouraging more violations of human rights. 
For the third time in a month, the UN General Assembly has adopted a resolution on Ukraine by a clear majority. Once again, the international community stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and all other people affected by the war of Russian aggression. Once again, the international community strongly calls on Russia to cease the destruction of innocent lives across Ukraine and immediately and unconditionally withdraw all its troops. While the Security Council remains unable to take action because of the Russian veto, the General Assembly has demonstrated the strength of international support towards addressing the Russian aggression against Ukraine. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the European Union. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Netherlands on behalf of Benelux countries. President, I deliver this statement on behalf of the Benelux countries, Belgium, Luxembourg, and my own country, the Netherlands. The Benelux countries align themselves with the statement just made by the European Union. Mr. President, the Benelux countries remain unwavering in their support for Ukraine's independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders and its democratic freedom. We condemn in the strongest terms the unprovoked war of aggression by the Russian Federation against Ukraine. Mr. President, it is the third time that we meet in this emergency special session in just over a month. Today, like before, the exceptional circumstances caused by the war in Ukraine leave us no other choice. We meet because we are horrified by the reports of atrocities committed by the Russian armed forces in Ukraine, by the images from places like Bucha, Staryabikiv, Mariupol and Hostomel that show a complete disregard for human rights and the lives of civilians, and by the personal testimonies of rape, and sexual violence that are emerging. Clearly, these actions are unacceptable for any UN member state, but even more so for a member of the Human Rights Council. It is therefore important that the General Assembly has just voted to take the exceptional step to suspend the membership of the Russian Federation of the Human Rights Council. It is important because membership of the Council comes with responsibilities and duties. Resolution 60-251, which established the Council, clearly states that Council members shall, and I quote, uphold the highest standards in the promotion and protection of human rights. Holding a seat in the Human Rights Council is not a free ride. The Benelux countries, as recent and current members of the Human Rights Councils, are strong supporters of its mandate, and we note that members sign up to a heightened level of public scrutiny and commit to engage with the Council in a spirit of dialogue, cooperation and self-reflection, grounded in a desire to use their membership to strengthen the enjoyment of human rights at home and abroad. It is clear that with its actions in Ukraine, the Russian Federation is failing its responsibilities as a member of the Human Rights Council. But, Mr. President, this is not just about the Human Rights Council. What is at stake is the credibility of the UN as a whole. The UN Secretary General, in his statement to the Security Council on Tuesday, clearly stated that the war in Ukraine is one of the greatest challenges ever to the international order and the global peace architecture that was founded on the United Nations Charter. That is, what is at stake if we allow the Russian Federation to commit to these crimes without consequences. In its resolution on March the 2nd, the General Assembly called upon the Russian Federation to abide by the principles set forth in the Charter. And yet, we are confronted with the opposite, further violations of that same Charter. Mr. President, my final point is on accountability. I am repeating the call by the UN Secretary General and the High Commissioner for Human Rights that all efforts be made to ensure an independent and effective investigation into what happened in Bucha and other places. We therefore fully support the work of the Commission of Inquiry that was established by the Human Rights Council and the essential role of the International Criminal Court when it comes to investigating possible war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. 
These efforts complement the investigations undertaken by the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, which the EU stands ready to support. So let's be clear, the perpetrators of these crimes are being watched and evidence is being compiled with a view to their prosecution. We owe it to the victims and the family to find the truth and to provide justice and accountability. Mr. President, there is of course a solution to stop these atrocities. The Russian Federation chose to start this war of aggression against Ukraine. It can also choose to stop it, to immediately cease hostilities, withdraw its troops and fully respect international humanitarian and human rights law. I thank you, Mr. President.